In this video, we're going to look at how to keep objects from being destroyed when moving between scenes. And so by default, when you load a new scene in Unity, so right here we have our scene one, when you load a new scene in Unity, everything in the hierarchy is destroyed and it's replaced with the stuff in the scene that you load. But there are certainly cases where we're going to want to have some set of objects that exist in all of our scenes or in some subset of our scenes, so we want them to keep alive when changing scenes. And one example might be, say, a music controller. It controls the background music of all the scenes of my game. So I'll just go ahead and add that quick. Call this music controls. And it might have some objects on it. So it might have like an audio source, it might have a control script, some other things that help us manage this music. And of course, right now, if I hit play and I hit space, we lose our music controls. So how do we keep this when transitioning between scenes? The solution is to use a built-in method in Unity called don't destroy on load. And how don't destroy on load works is it actually takes your object and it moves it to another scene. Uh, it moves it to a scene called don't destroy on load. So that when you unload scene one and you load scene two, this other scene is basically loaded additively with those scenes. So we would have scene one and the don't destroy on load scene loaded. We'd unload scene one and load scene two, the don't destroy on load scene would still be there. So it's a neat little trick that allows us to keep things, um, you know, overall sort of game managers, uh, music controllers, all kinds of things between levels. And the way that we do this, just create a simple script. And I'm just going to call this save me. And then pop over to the um, uh, Visual Studio. And we just have to do this once. We have to mark this as being in the don't destroy on load scene. So we can do that in the start method. And the method is called don't destroy on load. And then you just pass in the object that you want to save. In this case, we want to save the game object that's attached to this script. And when you save the game object, it'll save everything on that game object, and it'll also save all the child game objects. So we hit save, pop back over to Unity, we have our save me script, and we go ahead and add it to the music controls. And then when we hit play, and we space transition to our other scene, we see that the music controls is still there. Now I mentioned earlier that this works by basically shuttling this off to another scene, and so that actually begs the question, how can we tell what scene an object is in? And the way that we can do that is with a property of game objects called scene. So the way that we can do this is by typing gameObject.scene. And this will give us the associated scene that this game object is loaded inside of. And what we can do with that is we can get, for instance, the name of the scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and debug log out. Go over to Unity, and when we hit play, we're going to see that this is in the don't destroy on load scene. Now there's a problem that comes along with this, and that problem is that if we have something loaded in scene one, and it doesn't get destroyed, and then we go to scene two, and then we go back to scene one, we're going to have two copies. And let me show you that real quick. So in Visual Studio, I've modified our transition script so that if we're in scene zero, we're going to load scene one. Uh, if we're in scene one, we're going to load scene zero. So every time we press space, we'll transition between these scenes. And when I pop over to Unity and go ahead and hit play, then we're going to see that we have our music controls. We still have our music controls. And then, so I actually need to add our transition script uh, to our scene two real quick. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, and go back to scene one. Let's try that again. So we have our music controls. We load scene two. We have our music controls. We load scene one. Now we have two copies of the music controls. So this is definitely an issue. Every time we return to that scene, we're going to add another copy because the copies never get destroyed. So. Um, in general, when you need to keep information between scenes, um, there are better ways to do it than using this don't destroy on load. Um, for instance, things like statics, uh, static variables, things like singletons, uh, things that are covered in other videos. But if we do want to use destroy, don't destroy on load, then we have to be cognizant of the fact that every time we return to the scene, it's going to add another copy. And so there are a couple of other ways that we can do this. Um, one way that we can do this is we can actually start our game in a totally blank scene that only contains the thing we want to save. 
We then mark that as don't destroy on load. We shuffle it into its own scene. And then we load our main scene of the game, which is usually like our main menu scene. That way later when we return to the main menu scene, that's not the scene that had our music controls or whatever it is. So we don't get another copy. So that's one way to do it. Another way is just in our script on our music control, we can check when it first loads up, we can ask how many copies of this are there in the scene. If there's more than one copy, then just destroy one of the copies. Um, and that's a, a fairly common way of managing this as well. And that's all that's kind of an, an exercise to the viewer here. If you want to use this technique, give it a try. And if you get stuck, of course, come and talk to me. And that, in a nutshell, is how we can keep objects in Unity. You know, things like um, audio sources, components, scripts, all that type of stuff, and transition it between scenes.